Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and in this video we are going to learn about the differences between temperature and heat. So what is temperature? Well, it says right here that temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy in the particles of a substance. So in other words, temperature is a measure of how fast the particles in a substance are moving. And at higher temperatures, the particles in an object have more kinetic energy and are going to be moving faster and at lower temperatures those particles are going to slow down and have less kinetic energy so if we take a look at this this graphic right here we can see that there's some particles in motion and let's just suppose that these are gas particles and so what's going to happen to these gas particles as we increase the temperature of the gas well as we increase the temperature of the gas these gas particles are going to start to move faster and faster and faster and therefore they're going to have more kinetic energy so once again temperature is just a measure of the uh, average kinetic energy of the particles that are in that substance and if we were to cool this gas down to a lower temperature then these gas particles are going to start to slow down and they're going to have less kinetic energy all right so understand that relationship between temperature and uh, the amount of kinetic energy that those particles have they're directly proportional right as the temperature increases so does their kinetic energy and as the temperature of the particles decreases their kinetic energy also decreases and so now let's take a look at a uh, at a simulation where we can apply this concept and so let's take a look at this simulation compliments of the university of colorado uh, fet simulations uh, visit their website they have a lot of really cool science simulations that you can take a look at but let's take a look at this simulation right here in this little container we have some neon particles and what we're going to do with this is we're going to take a look at what happens to these neon particles as the temperature starts to increase and decrease and so right now the temperature of the gas that's in this container is 105 k and as we begin to cool this gas down what do you notice about the neon particles here well if we take a look we'll notice that they start to slow down so as we cool something down that is to say as the temperature decreases the kinetic energy of these particles also decreases and if we cool this down more and more and more these neon particles have less amounts of kinetic energy if you remember kinetic energy is equal to one half the mass times the velocity squared so if we slow down these particles they're gonna have less and less and less kinetic energy and if we get this down to absolute zero or zero K which is the coldest possible temperature in the known universe then what do you think is gonna to happen to these particles what do you think is gonna to happen to their kinetic energy well if we take a look if we keep cooling this down and removing thermal energy from the system here they stop right at absolute zero particle motion stops all particles have zero kinetic energy at zero k all right so understand that concept and so as we apply heat what do you think is going to happen to these particles well you guessed it their kinetic energy is going to start to increase and so as we increase the temperature of these particles here the kinetic energy of these particles increases so all temperature really is temperature is nothing more than a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles that are in that substance and if we continue to heat this up approaching 100 K we'll notice that the uh, average kinetic energy of these particles is increasing as their velocity is increasing right and so these little particles are hitting each other with more and more force as their velocity uh, is increasing we're approaching 150 K right now so these are getting pretty hot and you'll notice that the kinetic energy is also increasing alright so understand that concept once again that temperature is nothing more than a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles that are in that substance right at higher temperatures those particles are going to move uh, faster and faster and faster and have more kinetic energy and at lower temperatures those particles are going to slow down and have uh, significantly less amounts of kinetic energy and so what is heat well heat is a little bit different than temperature don't get the two confused a lot of people confuse temperature and heat they think they're the same thing but they're not it says right here that heat is a measure of the flow of energy due to temperature differences between objects all right and that heat always flows from hot to cold and we can measure heat in something called joules all right so let's suppose we have some sort of styrofoam container right here and in this styrofoam container we have equal masses of water right on the left hand side 
as we do on the right hand side. And so this styrofoam container is separated by a thin little piece of metal and we know that metal conducts heat. And so right here on the left hand side of this container we have water that is at 90 degrees Celsius, right? So it's, it's pretty hot, right? It's on the verge of boiling. And on the right hand side of this container here we have water that is pretty cold. It's at 10 degrees Celsius, right? It's on the verge of freezing. And so what's going to happen if you have this styrofoam container that is separated by this thin thin piece of metal and set it somewhere for a couple hours. Well, what's going to end up happening is this. If we take a look right here after a couple of hours, what will end up happening is that the hot water is going to transfer some of its thermal energy, right? Some of its heat is going to get transferred to the cold water, right? Heat is always transferred from uh, hot to cold. Keep that in mind, never the reverse. So when we come back in a couple hours, what will end up happening is that the temperature of this water here will end up being 50 degrees Celsius, and the temperature of this water right here will end up being 50 degrees Celsius, provided that we have the same amount of water in this on this side of our container as we do on this side. So let's suppose we have a uh, 1.5 liters here and 1.5 liters here we have equal amounts of water and therefore the temperatures of these wa uh, of, of the water is going to level out over time so how did we figure this out well to get the final temperature what we ended up doing is we ended up taking the temperature of the water on the left hand side which was 90 degrees celsius plus the temperature of the water on the right hand side which is 10 degrees celsius and we ended up just dividing this by two. And so what we end up with, what we end up with right here is 50 degrees Celsius. So when we come back in a couple of hours, this container is going to have water that is 50 degrees on the left hand side and 50 degrees on the right hand side, and they're going to level off. All right, so that is what heat is. Heat is a measure of the flow of energy due to temperature differences, right? And so this right here is a temperature. A measurement of temperature right this is a temperature they're going to level off at 50 degrees celsius but we can actually measure how much thermal energy or heat this side absorbed and this side loses and we can do that in a unit of measurement called the joule j-o-u-l-e or capital j for short okay so understand that concept where temperature is a measure of the average amount of kinetic energy of the particles in that substance, and heat is a measure of the flow of energy due to temperature differences. So let's take a look at a little simulation now that hopefully summarizes uh, what we're talking about right here. And so in this little FET simulation from the University of Colorado, we can start to see uh, heat transfers that take place between different objects. And so if we take a look right here, we're gonna go ahead and put this water on this little heat source right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this up. So we're gonna heat this up, get it to be pretty hot, a pretty warm temperature, let it do its thing. And so once this heats up, we're gonna go ahead and drop in a, uh, a thermometer just so we can see the temperature of this. So we're heating this water up. It's getting pretty warm and so what we're going to do now is we're going to place a thermometer uh, right in here and we can see that the temperature of this water is pretty hot, right? Those water molecules are moving with a lot of kinetic energy. They're moving faster and faster as we heat this up. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this brick uh, on this little heat source right here and we're going to remove thermal energy from this brick we're going to cool it down right so we're going to cool this down and so if we get our thermometer and put it next to this brick right here we can see that uh, our thermometer is going to cool down right so we're cooling this thermometer down i'm sorry we're cooling this little uh this brick down and so we're going to heat this water up and so what do you think is going to happen if i put this really cold brick in this really hot water well let's find out let's take a look at what happens let's take a look at the heat transfer that takes place so we're going to take this brick now we're going to put it into this hot scalding water and we're going to take a look at what happens and as you see if you take a look at this thermometer what ended up happening is that the temperature of the water is dropping is decreasing right the temperature of the water is decreasing but the temperature of the brick has increased over time and what ends up happening is that these two temperatures here are ultimately going to end up being exactly the same over time they're both going to level off 
and be about the same temperature if we remove the heat source from both of these items. Okay, so heat once again is a flow of energy due to temperature differences and heat always flows from areas of warm or hot to areas of cold. So when we put this cold brick into this little uh, this, this, this pot of boiling water, the, uh, the brick, I'm sorry, the, wa the warm water transferred its thermal energy or heat to the, the cold brick. And so you had a leveling off of the temperatures there. And so let's take a look at what happens when we use the iron. So we're going to go ahead and put this on our little heat source. We're going to speed this up here. We're going to heat this water up to a, a really hot temperature. We're going to get this water uh, boiling. And so now we're going to put our thermometer in this pot of water here and we can see that it's very hot, right? It has a lot of kinetic energy. Let's heat this up a little more. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this brick here. We're going to put it on this heat source right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the heat. We're going to remove thermal energy from this iron uh, block right here. We're going to warm this water up some more. And so let's take a look at what happens to the temperature of this iron block when we put it in this water. When we put it in this water, we can see now that the temperature of the water and the temperature of the iron are going to even out, right? The temperature of the water is decreasing as it transfers some of its heat to the iron block, right? And so the block, which was pretty cold before, and those iron particles had low amounts of kinetic energy, uh, they're absorbing thermal energy or heat from the water. And so the temperature of this iron block is increasing while the temperature of the water is decreasing. And over time, those are going to level off and be about the same. So once again, this little simulation just kind of shows you uh, what heat is. It's a transfer of thermal energy. It's the flow of thermal energy uh, due to temperature differences between the two substances. And so if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that's going to subscribe to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.